Was one of your resolutions this year to order less takeout? HelloFresh sends everything you need to get dinner on the table. No meal planning, all deliciousness. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com slash MLM16. Paul DeNeo, known as Ice Poseidon, was once the face of live streaming, has been exposed for taking advantage of his fan base and getting away with half a million dollars. But what would you say if we told you that this is just the tip of the iceberg, that this social media celebrity was capable of taking much, much more? Hey, I'm the Illuminati and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a current kind of scam situation surrounding Ice Poseidon. There's a lot to actually unpack about this guy and I didn't really know who he even was. I know I'm slow to it. I know like Copyzilla and other YouTubers and streamers have covered like this recent drama like faster than I have, but I needed to go back in time and see like everything. And oh my God, there's a lot. So just for reference for today's episode, uh, we will be mentioning Paul Danino by his streamer handle instead of his real name. So Ice Poseidon is the same guy. And He apparently has like a notoriously negative presence in the streaming community, not to mention he's apparently also a serial fraudster. So how long has he been running scams and schemes and what can we expect from this polarizing individual in the future? Well, let's take a look. Before he dove into full-time scamming, Paul came up with the handle Ice Poseidon and began streaming on Twitch's platform in 2015. He started by playing RuneScape, a well-received computer game from 2001. Like most successful streamers, he gained popularity by using his loud personality and made even the most basic of games engaging. In 2016, Niantic and Pokemon released Pokemon Go. The release of a game that used augmented reality as a platform afforded Ice Poseidon the opportunity to take his boisterous act on the road. With the entire world as his platform, he easily ignored the pretense of playing a game and streaming his daily activities with it. Essentially, he pioneered the live streaming genre and became a live streamer before the IRL category was opened in 2017. To summarize a highly active media personality, Ice made a career out of being disruptive. He performed what many considered odd acts and placed himself in awkward and dangerous situations. As a streamer, he wasn't above bothering strangers or businesses like drunkenly debating with animal rights protesters at their own protest or showing up at literal crime scenes with mace and a blowtorch pretending to be a superhero or something. Let's just say it was not a helpful gesture. So that brings us to Ice Poseidon's first recording of scamming, 2015. And yeah, you heard that right. 2015 was the very first year he began his Twitch career. So way back in his first few YouTube videos, he's given multiple tutorials on how to scam other RuneScape players out of their high level armor. He himself has three separate tutorials on how to pull off these types of scams. And he goes in detail on how he tricks his fellow gamers. There's a lot of research that talks about personality and actions having an impact on what types of games a person may play. But the studios in the psychology of how a person plays is relatively new. In their studies of RPGs and mental health, Bowman and Liberoth break this phenomenon into two distinctive archetypes, bleeding and steering. To summarize an engaging article, bleed in occurs when aspects cross over from player to character, while bleed out happens when the character's actions and experiences affect the player. Alternately, steering is a process where a player directs the actions of their character for an out of game reason. Ice's 2015 RuneScape antics would be categorized as bleed in or steering for financial benefit. This is especially true for those who play a social game, whether it's a massive multiplayer online role-playing game or any type of live service multiplayer game. Social games give a stronger representation of social action since the players are part of an active community. And it isn't just scams in the game. Ice shows multiple clips on his YouTube revolving around manipulating others to get what he wants in RuneScape. Whether it's baking a raspberry pie or just having other players follow him around or just closing doors in people's faces, he exploits the people in his community to get what he wants. While the RuneScape scams can be dismissed as someone simply wanting to play a video game, I'd say that these were actually early indicators of what Ice is capable of, as well as his mindset. We learned a lot about what type of person this is in the span of his 40 minute tutorials. But let's get back to that streaming career. Though he was successful and popular, he found himself in trouble multiple times with Twitch. He often fed off getting himself in sorts of trouble or causing controversy. All you have to do is look through his YouTube titles. I got kicked out of the Texas Capitol. Ice Poseidon goes black blackface, used panties vending machine. 
Footage like this is spread all over his YouTube channel. He shows footage of him being swatted multiple times after encouraging his viewers to even do so. This is a serious and dangerous thing to do, and a brief description. Swatting is the act of calling the police on someone while they're gaming and misleading them to think there's a situation where guns are involved. The police go to the location where there's supposedly an armed threat and their intrusion interrupts the person gaming. There are people who have actually died from swatting and it's despicable to joke about it. Not only does he put himself in danger, but the people who he encouraged to swat him could possibly get in serious trouble for doing so too. He was banned on the first day that IRL streams were launched for showing someone's phone number on stream, a violation of Twitch's TOS. He was banned from Twitch altogether in 2017 for having someone call in a bomb threat on a plane he was boarding. He moved his platform to YouTube where his brand continued to grow. Ice Poseidon's fan base is as toxic as the former streamer himself, cited as often using racial and homophobic slurs during streams. Responsible for much of the chaos in his own streams, the Purple Army often shows up in other streams spamming CX. Interesting tidbit, the CX moniker is allegedly used to say that someone has a big nose like Ice Poseidon. He's claimed he's been in contention with his fan base, trying to make himself and his content better. It didn't take long for him to admit that there were scams he committed even earlier than his RuneScape ruses. Again on camera, he admits to actually committing a crime when he was about 13 years old, somewhere in 2007 or 2008. At that time, he actually stole credit card information from others in order to purchase in-game products. He claimed at the time that he was scared of getting caught, so he didn't go through with it, but he definitely has the means and motive to get what he wants. In 2017, he tried blending his streaming career and cryptocurrency for the first time when he used his platform to promote CX stocks, a fake form of currency that was supposed to farm Reddit karma, which was another violation of the terms of service, I might add. Hacking a social media system for exploitation is bad enough, but it gets even worse. Allegedly, one of his developers embedded malware into the program being downloaded by assumed investors. The malware would take over the computer and use it to mine crypto. CX Stocks was taken down for a while, but eventually resurfaced without taking away the mining program. Ice went on to claim on his streams and in forums that he didn't know what was going on and he was a changed man. He confronted Andres, the developer behind the hack online, but never fired him. The fake currency never lifted off and its traces all but disappeared from the internet. Did we actually believe that he had really changed? Apparently so. Despite his dubious actions, Ice continued growing in popularity. He developed the CX Network, his own streaming platform, claiming that it would rival Twitch and it had some moderate success. But trouble came again. Throughout this time period, he continued getting swatted by his toxic community. His actions sparked debate on whether swatting footage should be shown on social media at all. In March, 2019, the FBI raided his house in an investigation surrounding someone spoofing his phone number and making a number of bomb threats. It was also around this time that he was promoting a new venture, scuffed.com. While doing one of his long streams, he explains the business model to his new viewers. For the investors to make their money back, we grow the company to a certain point. Then we have other investors come in, they invest their money as well. Then when we get more than 2 million invested, the other investors will get their 2 million back. And Charles Ponzi would be so proud. This reminds me of the pirate Ponzi we talked about maybe two, three months ago, where he literally defined what a Ponzi scheme was while searching for investors. Like, why do they keep doing this? Just admitting it black and white. And then the other question is, why do people keep falling for it? Now, a commentator promptly pointed out that it was in fact a textbook scam, but Ice Poseidon backtracked and tried to explain it away. You'll find a trend in his videos of him not explaining things well, it didn't work, and thankfully scuff.com never got off the ground. Later on in 2019, his official Reddit pages were also shut down due to the toxic community he fostered. It was also around this time that a number of popular streamers distanced themselves from him, wanting nothing to do with his bad publicity anymore. He then moved to Mixer where his fan base followed him. He experienced some success filming a streamer's version of Big Brother named Scuffed Brother. Mixer merged with Facebook Gaming in June, 2020, and it seemed that Ice Poseidon had finally calmed down his antics. But all of this set the stage for Ice's biggest scheme last year. Ice Poseidon created the CX Coin platform in mid to late June of 2021. On July 9th, 2021, Ice made his very first official pitch of CX Coin to the public. I'm the founder of CX Coin. My name's Paul Zanino, otherwise known as Ice Poseidon. CX Coin is a meme coin token made for the streaming community to help viewers make donations to their favorite streamers. Now, Twitch has bits, cheers, and subscriptions, and YouTube has its own membership and donation platform. But this shitcoin was supposed to eliminate the middleman, the fees that streaming platforms take out of donations. As often with coin scams, he made a lot of promises to potential investors. 
Telegram has become a large platform for creators of cryptocurrency to communicate with their clients, and much of the information that we garnered came directly from the CX Coin Telegram. That being said, it was the best way to gather information and decipher the community's morale. The promotion was made in spite of footage being shown of him saying, if I see a million dollars in my portfolio, I'm out, or if I was a developer and I see a bunch of money, I'm running off with the bag. Combine the actual clip with ICE's past breaking the law and it's a shock that anyone actually believed him. But he convinced a number of people that he was a changed man. Aside from the quiet minority who immediately called CX Coin a scam, most gave him the benefit of the doubt. And initially he was true to his word, communicating with others on the health of the project, assuring and reinforcing the idea that it would be a long-term goal. They ordered an audit of TechRate, a crypto auditing firm, to give proof that CX was legit. He also allegedly had Dextero, a gaming site, take down an article accusing him of scamming his fan base. And that's important considering they were the ones who called them out on the scuff scheme. CX Coin also made a big promise that investment buyback would be locked in for the first five months. That was supposed to ensure transparency and security, but we'll get back to that point in just a moment. Enough people believed it and the buying began, but the communication didn't last for long. We had a researcher go into Telegram and we discovered that developer updates decreased in frequency not long after launch. In the interrogation from CoffeeZilla, we found that I stopped working on CX Coin two to six weeks after the launch. Before we get into the tragic part of this, let's look at the CX Coin coding itself. Ice Poseidon's coding was compared to Everrise, a known code used by those who want to copy and scam. And wouldn't you guess, the coding for the two different programs are nearly identical. And literally the only difference about the entire code is the name. So if that was the case, then where were the developers and what were they doing the whole time? Like the smallest amount of work was done in order to get the shit coin going and that was pretty much it. And the Telegram side of things shows quite a sad story. Initially, there was a lot of optimism and communication from the CX fan base. People were striking down doubters left and right, and the community was repeatedly reassured of ICE's intentions. But around late July, the Telegram suffered a severe drop of interaction. A lot of people began asking why there hadn't been any updates. Attentive consumers questioned the money's movement, like why was $200,000 pulled from the presale wallet and part of the liquidity? The moderators on Telegram assured the investors that funds were being used for the advertisement and growth of the coin. July 24th, shortly after CX launched, Ice bought himself a new Tesla. But that's just a coincidence. There isn't any way he would be misappropriating those funds, right? The streamer was adamant about his intentions. He even gave CoffeeZilla access to his CX coin wallet. Any financial action he took could be seen immediately and there was no way he could pull the rug. That is unless he gave the wrong wallet. Now, we mentioned CoffeeZilla here for two reasons. First, he is renowned on YouTube for uncovering online scams and confronting unscrupulous characters. The second reason we mention him is Ice used him in a way to claim his actions and intentions were benevolent. And as we can all see, when you get on CoffeeZilla's radar, you're bound to get attention. And if you're interested in seeing the entire recorded confrontation between Coffee and Ice Poseidon, a link to his video will be provided in the description box. You'll hear it straight from the horse's mouth. It's quite a listen. Around the time of ICE's first pull, damage control was in full effect. It was revealed that ICE took 30% of the presale of the $200,000 from before, and none of it was mentioned in the company's information. The concerned investors were shouted down with claims of using FUD, a popular mantra meaning fear, uncertainty, and doubt to defame ICE. The Telegram continued being active with members engaged in the conversation about making CX successful. Its chat was filled with members reassuring each other that there was nothing to worry about, the expected spam bot and pressure all around to buy up the coin. On July 19th, there was some hope. CX Coin showed up in an advertisement for BTalk, a blockchain social network that utilized Telegram as a platform. This is the only major record of real effort put in by Ice Poseidon, and it's referenced in the confrontation. Unfortunately for investors, the BTalk ad did not result in more buyers. It was noted on July 25th by members of the Telegram that Ice began distancing himself from the CX brand. He allegedly took it off the description of his Twitter account and stopped responding on Telegram. It was around the same time that the volume of his YouTube videos drastically declined. Shareholders began reporting substantial losses on investment with nothing but the echo chamber to console them. On July 29th, Ice Poseidon did a stream where he briefly talked about CX Coin as well as other financial options. The moments he talked about it, he assured the audience that CX Coin was still going on and he promoted his platform EasyTip4.me, a donation platform powered by CX Coin. It appears that he was the only true beneficiary of the platform as well. In early August, he was accused of only burning 1% of the token instead of 3%. Burning the 3% would be better for the health of the coin, but as always, he looked out for himself only. 
By mid-August, the Telegram chat declined. Members barely spoke, and the ones who did had lost hope in the project, even losing hope in the idea of getting money back from selling. But rest assured, Ice Poseidon was indeed busy during this turbulent time for his crypto project. He was involved in important things like calling his investors idiots when they questioned his actions or staying involved with Pepe Moon and Tiki Token, also coins that had been called out as scams. Not to mention getting a Tinder makeover on his YouTube channel. Now, I understand that in order to build a CX brand, he had to be shown on stream to advertise it, but he did very little to promote the actual product. Then sometime around mid-August, he went dark in Discord. He successfully fell off the radar until October, 2021. He dumped the wallet again, taking out what amounted to about $200,000 from the marketing wallet in a span of 10 minutes. 50 days of silence only to come in, open the marketing wallet, which was there to grow CX coin. Investors immediately asked why the money was moving in that manner. The moderators behind the Telegram and Discord didn't have an answer, but assured investors they were preparing for a large marketing campaign. It was around this time where ICE talked about major purchases in Ethereum paying off and bringing in profits. During the final four months of 2021, the crypto market had a massive surge in profits. Bitcoin and Ethereum reached their all-time highs and smaller coins like Dogecoin and Shiba peaked in popularity. At one of the most crucial points in CX Coin's lifespan with a perfect opportunity to finally grow the coin, Ice Poseidon said nothing about CX Coin or its growth. Instead, he profited from yet another scam, ApeNots. He promoted a company looking to give away a small collection of NFTs, which had grown popular over the last year in the crypto world. The entrants of the raffle were supposed to give their Solana address to have the chance to win. And instead, ApeNots closed down their social media links and never gave away their mints. Oh, and they drained the Solana wallets. We previously discussed the unknown and perilous nature of NFTs, so it's no surprise that this man figured out a way to benefit from them too. He sent out an apology for being tricked. The NFL seller paid him to promote the mints and considering his past activity, I doubt the apology was genuine. So let's see, there's credit card fraud, scamming and harassing people in RuneScape, CX stocks and the Bitcoin miner, scuff.com, Pepe meme, Tiki token, Ape Knot, CX network, swatting, bomb threats. (sighs) I'm running out of fingers here to count all this shit on, but just time and time and time again, there's clearly a pattern. The fact that this person hasn't actually had any major legal action taken against him is kind of astounding. It's one thing to get away with committing a crime for a long period of time, but there's evidence all over the place. Another major red flag came on November 15th, 2021, when ICE removed the CX coin channel from his Discord. Anytime a member of his Discord asked about the coin, the question was deleted. All that was left of the coin was Telegram's chat. From the Telegram, people had all but given up on the coin with just a handful of outliers. Some of the investors pressed moderators for answers and to their horror, moderators had no idea. The very people running ICE's main communication began demanding he give answers to all the people who invested in his vision. All of ICE's past scams, schemes, stealing, and laundering brought us to January 22nd, the big confrontation between CoffeeZilla and ICE Poseidon. And before we get to that day of reckoning, I'm just gonna go ahead and place today's sponsors here because there was really no other place to put them, so voila. Did you know that there's like a million gimmicks out there right now promising you an amazing night's sleep? But no matter what, you're sleeping on a terrible mattress and that sleep will be terrible no matter what. And that's why it's worth getting a purple mattress. Only purple mattresses have the Gel Flex Grid, a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. The Gel Flex Grid supports your back and legs and yet also cushions your shoulders, neck, and hips. Purple has already sent me their pillows before and I love them and Casper has stolen my pillows, but now this year they sent me a whole mattress and oh my God, the sleep is life-changing. I already actually have some friends that have a purple mattress in their guest room. So I've slept on it before I had the chance to try and get my hands on a mattress and then purple sent me one anyway. So it was kind of like this weird convenient moment, but like it is so comfortable and I'm a hot sleeper. So it really keeps me cool through the night, which is something I was kind of shocked and surprised by. It was a little weird at first, the first night I totally admit it, but once I got used to it, I cannot get enough of it. So start getting a great night's sleep and having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash MLM and use code MLM. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash MLM with code MLM for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash MLM promo code MLM. Terms apply. 
This episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Now, I do love me some online shopping, but keeping track of promo codes, not so much. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. With Honey, you just shop online, and when you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you do is click apply coupons. And if Honey finds a working coupon, it'll apply that automatically. Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Now, I've mentioned it in passing, but I'm in the process of moving, and of course, moving is absolute hell. And I've been buying a couple new pieces of like accessories for the house, like new rugs and things like that. So when I was online shopping, I was actually surprised that a fair amount of the furniture stores and stuff that I was looking at all got coupons from Honey, and I saved like 10, 15, 20%, depending which store I went to, and it was kind of nice. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be just straight up missing out on savings. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash MLM. That's joinhoney.com slash MLM. To summarize what he's actually been accused of, Ice Poseidon used an alternative CX coin forked wallet to drain the liquidity pool of his own coin. A liquidity pool is a crowdsourced pool of cryptocurrencies or tokens locked in a smart contract that is used to facilitate trades between the assets on a decentralized exchange. Instead of traditional markets of buyers and sellers, many decentralized finance platforms use automated market makers, which allow digital assets to be traded in an automatic and permissionless manner through the use of liquidity pools. He was able to justify draining the market pool because he was just saying he was preparing for a marketing campaign. If you're looking for a play-by-play of the interrogation between Coffee and Ice, don't bother. As I've said before, I would encourage anyone to check out the full interview and see it for themselves, which again, will be linked. But I'm not going to repeat what was said. It is really worth watching the entire video that he did. What is astounding to me is that Ice admits to doing wrong, but tries to play mental and verbal gymnastics to justify his actions. I do wanna talk about a couple of the major talking points of what was said in the interview though because throughout the interview, Ice claims that it couldn't be a scam because he didn't start CX coin with malicious intent. As ridiculous of an argument as that sounds, he doubled down on it and did nothing to prove he was innocent. Towards the end, he tries to passively blame the people who believed in him for essentially getting scammed. And there is some truth in the fact that people are responsible for how they use their money. I recommend that you never hand money over of any sort to any sort of important investment with people that you just don't know well. Your money should always be placed somewhere with someone you trust or with a financial structure with checks and balances. And to be fair, that can also be a challenge at times. The number of people an individual can rely on when it comes to their money is far smaller than you might think. After all, we've covered stories of people scamming their family members and friends, not to mention the delicate dynamics of parasocial relationships that are at play in this case. Now, when it comes to talking about Ice Poseidon, one thing becomes abundantly clear. Ice is a selfish human being, and he has historically been a selfish, manipulative person since he jumped into social gaming. He took advantage of people who felt close to him, who obviously trusted him. He paints a picture of, I just took all the unnecessary money. Everyone can still get their money back, even if I just drained the liquidity pool. That is statistically and categorically false. If you take a look at CX Coin's value, you'll see massive drops in value paralleling when he withdrew large sums of money. Its value only reached the higher marketing price when Coffee called Ice out on his dishonesty. What's even worse is Ice still has the ability to give the money back to his investors, but he just won't do it. He took your money and he's keeping it. Ice has since been slammed all over social media with many reactors laughing at how absurdly immoral his stance is. He tried to save face by posting on a twit longer and for fun, we'll take a look at it. He warns that the post has a lot of terminology and might be hard to grasp if you're a noob at crypto, but everything is verifiable and I encourage people to go check for themselves. This is the only statement he's since made since the interview aired. So let's see if our smooth brains can decipher this complicated explanation. First of all, I did not advertise CX coin to my casual fans who don't know anything about crypto and would be extremely vulnerable to a highly volatile market. I only advertised it to people in the crypto sphere and fans who knew about crypto and understood what they were getting into. Well, why not? He was perfectly fine with advertising Ape Knots and receiving a sponsorship for it. Not to mention Pepe Moon and Tiki Token. It seems like he was fine advertising all the other crypto activities except for his own. Normally people who have something to hide actually try to, you know, hide it, but he goes on. On the whole video, there was not one single mention of the main product, which has been fully functional for months. Easy tip 4.me. I had even used this on some of the streams. All of this was built from scratch. But the thing is, 
it's not working. Our research investigated its capabilities and they couldn't join, let alone support their favorite streamers. So moving on. Also, when I took a portion of the LP, nearly $300,000, there wasn't many real holders or much money invested in the token by that point. Top holder has 15 BNB worth of tokens and holder number 50 has 0.6 BNB of tokens. It was completely unnecessary to have 400,000 in the LP, 264K in LP, 150K in buyback function. And the money was at risk of getting devalued due to crypto markets dropping. Now, crazy idea, but maybe the money was devalued because ICE abandoned the project almost directly after its launch. But no, that, that could not possibly be the case. Now, it is true that the crypto market across all platforms have taken a collective dip in value. He's not actually lying about that, but the market has somewhat stabilized, so that shouldn't have been a concern. Not to mention in the interview, he says he's going to put it back in the dropping crypto market. So much for, and I I quote this phrase, the buyback wallet can only be used to buy CX coin and burn those tokens. It cannot be withdrawn or spent in a different way. The revelation of Ice Poseidon's actions has damaged his already poor reputation, and he's deserved every bit of it, quite frankly. Despite what he says, many people have suffered a loss of investments as well as damaged expectations. A number of people have spoken out, being directly impacted by his choices. Some invested small amounts of money, but no amount changes the fact that he conned them. This was his last chance to repair his public image, and he failed miserably. I anticipate this individual will try to virtually disappear and stop streaming altogether. And perhaps he'll try to come back in a few years with a new scam to peddle. There is some speculation that enough complaints will actually prompt the FBI to apprehend the former streamer and charge him with an official crime. If you have been impacted by Ice Poseidon scam or any fraud for that matter, I encourage you to file a complaint with www.ic3.gov. Even if the CX coin scam doesn't bring in the authorities, the court of public opinion has spoken and ICE has been convicted of being a scumbag. To be honest, I thought I was coming in and covering a streamer who just happened to find a way to con others, but it turns out he's kind of a serial scammer who's got a long history of defrauding people in the virtual world and in the real world. The real question here is, has there ever been any point in time where this man's ever been trustworthy? Because I'm having a hard time seeing it. But with that being said, that's where we're gonna end today's episode. This, of course, all just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. Just something interesting I thought we'd take a look at because boy, do we love scams. So thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. If you liked it, please make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so you don't miss out on another new episode. I appreciate you spending some of your time here with me today. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 